And uh, welcome to the meeting of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. I'm Council Member Francisco Moya, and today we are joined by Council Members Constantinides, Lansman, Levin, Reynoso, and Rivero. Today we have uh, two hearings, and we will be voting on some applications. If you are here to testify on any item on the calendar for which the hearing uh, was not already closed, please fill out a white speaker slip with the Sergeant at Arms and indicate the LU number of the item you wish to testify uh, on that slip. Today we will start with a hearing on LU 107, the Seven Hills Mediterranean Grill, an application for a revocable consent to operate an unenclosed sidewalk cafe at 158 West 72nd Street in Manhattan in Council Member Rosenthal's district. In perfect timing. Um, I now will open the public hearing on LU 107. Is, are there any members of the public here who wish to testify? Seeing none, I uh, will now turn it over to Council Member Rosenthal. Thank you much, so much, Chair Moya. What an honor it is to be a guest at your committee. Very, very <laughs> impressive. What a great group you have here. Huh, no one's on their cell, everyone's paying attention. It's really impressive. It is. Thank really you. impressive. Um, so, Chair, I really appreciate your uh, bringing, allowing us to bring this application forth. I just um, want to be very clear about some of the stipulations that the community board um, required. Uh, and that is we've agreed to, uh, so on this sidewalk, um, which is always the issue here, uh, we've agreed to one row of um, tables outside, and uh, the owner has agreed to that as well. Um, and uh, I, I think that's the main thing, especially with no one here talking from the community or from the, or the applicant. The main thing to have on the record is that everyone's agreed to one row. It's a very busy uh, thoroughfare, and there was nice, robust dialogue at the, um, at the community board hearing. But uh, overall, I'm, I'm supportive of this application. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, I now close the public hearing on this application. Um, our next hearing is on LU 114, the application by Lavo Restaurant for a revocable consent to operate an unenclosed sidewalk cafe at 625 Madison Avenue in Council Member Powers' district in Manhattan. And I will now open up the public hearing on LU uh, 114. Uh, there was a letter of agreement. Um, and are there any members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none. Okay. Yeah. Seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application. Uh, we will now move on to a vote on the items we heard prior to the hearings. Uh, at prior hearings, I now I now will describe uh, these items. We will be voting to approve LU 111, the 180 188 Avenue of the Americas application for a zoning map change for the properties in Speaker Johnson's district in Manhattan the establishment of a new C25 commercial overlay and removal of a C15 commercial overlay will allow the operation of a gym a and a dance studio in an existing mixed use building. We will be voting to approve LU112, the 1568 Broadway Palace Theater text amendment affecting property in council member Powers' district in Manhattan. Uh, the application seeks a text amendment to modify the special Times Square district signage requirement and its, streets, uh, and its street wall and setback requirements. These changes will facilitate renovation to the existing 42-story building, and in connection with this approval, the application will fully renovate the landmark Palace Theater's interior and exterior. We will be voting to approve LU-113, the 85 Mercer special application permit application. This application seeks, uh, a use, seeks a use waiver to allow retail use on portions of the ground floor and cellar of an existing five-story building at 85 Mercer Street in Council Member Chin's district in Manhattan. Uh, we will be voting to approve with modifications LUs 108 
and 109, the 142, 150 South Portland Avenue rezoning, a portion of a block bound by South Elliott Palace Place, uh, Hanson Place, South Portland Avenue, and the Academy Park Place in Council Member Cumbo's District in Brooklyn. This application is for a rezoning that would allow subject properties to build 50 feet higher than the existing zoning allows. Uh, the zoning would be in connection with a proposed affordable housing development, but it would, it would apply to several other properties on the block. The proposed rezoning area is located in a contextually zoned neighborhood, which was a subject of the Fort Greene Clinton Hill neighborhood rezoning in 2007. In its 2007 report, uh, City Planning Commission noted that uh, 11 to 13 story tower developments were proposed or had been constructed that were inconsistent with the low rise row house <coughs> neighborhood, <coughs> low rise, low rise row house neighborhood character of the neighborhood. The CPC stated that the 27 uh, rezoning would protect and preserve the historic brownstone row house characteristics and pre uh, prevent future out of scale developments. In connection with the present applications, uh, we heard many members of the community testify against the proposed rezoning due to concerns about inappropriate bulk for this block and concerns that the hard one contextual zoning uh, would be unraveled by it. Witnesses who testified in favor of the present applications testified about the applicant's particular project, not about the other proposed development in the large rezoning area. The applicant's property would be developed with a 13-story mixed-use residential and community facility building with a total of 100 apartments, all of which would be affordable. The applicant will be complying with uh, MIH option one, but will be providing many more affordable units than the MIH option requires. And in fact, one of the actions will vote, one of the actions will vote to approve today is LU 110, an application by HPD uh, for an Article 11 tax exemption, which would support this project. The tax exemption would exempt all of the land and proposed building, except for the businesses, uh, commercial and community facility components uh, from real property taxes for a period of 40 years. Given that the applicant's site would provide 100 units, all of which will be affordable under the city's M squared term sheet and will include community facilities providing medical and social services, we believe that the burdens of the additional bulk are outweighed for this development site. We distinguish this site from the other sites in the proposed rezoning area preliminary on the basis of the amount of affordable housing that will be developed here as well as other public benefits. There is no indication based upon the environmental review conclusions that two of the other sites would be developed at all, and there is no indication that the third would be developed with such a significant amount of affordable housing. Therefore, there is no reason to rezone those lots. Accordingly, we will be modifying the rezoning application to apply only to the project site. We will also be striking MIH option two uh, from the zoning text map. Okay. Got it. And, and now we have Council Member Cumbo who wishes to uh, give her remarks. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you, Chair Moya, and I thank all of my colleagues for being here. I know that this is a very busy time with so many graduations and celebrations in our districts. I thank you all for being here for this very important project. Good morning, and thank you, Chair Moya, for the opportunity to speak on this project. The 142-150 South Portland Avenue rezoning proposal has attracted significant discussion and debate throughout the Fort Greene community. After hearing from concerned constituents throughout the review process, including from over 50 members of the public at our city council hearing, I have considered all of the varying points of view and arrived at the conclusion to recommend approval of this application with modifications to restrict this rezoning to the church's proposed development site. I'll say that again, 
and recommend to approval of this application with modifications to restrict this rezoning to the church's proposed development site and allow only MIH option one with deep affordability requirements. The Fort Greene Clinton Hill rezoning of 2007 established carefully chosen height limits to protect community character from high rise development. The existing R7A zoning was a height limit of 95 feet. With the proposed R88, zoning would allow buildings as high as 145 feet. Such proposals for increasing height and density in the area of this rezoning, which was community driven, has still strong community support, should only be considered for projects with truly exceptional public benefit. And I would add that 100% rent regulated housing in my district is certainly not uh, a project that comes before me often or ever. The proposed development at 142, 150 South Portland Avenue will be 100% income restricted and developed under the HPD M2 term sheet with deeply affordable units required by MIH option one, as well as units targeting moderate and middle incomes. In addition to these 100 units of affordable housing, there will be room to spare for nearly 18,000 square feet of community facility space for social services, health services, and general community programming. Additionally, the church has committed to providing prevailing wages for its building workers, which as we know will afford those workers good paying jobs with benefits for themselves and their families. And I wanna thank all of my colleagues uh, here, uh, Chair Moya, uh, Chair Salamanca, all of my colleagues, HPD and others for negotiating with us up until the hours, wee hours of last night to get to this place. In contrast, the as of right alternative under R7A zoning would result in 71 units of housing with only 14 affordable units and not enough space in the building to include community facilities. For the development proposal before us, the significant increase in affordability and community benefits justifies the increase in zoning from R7A to R8A. In contrast, properties outside of the applicant's proposed development site, such as the vacant lots on Hanson Place, do not warrant this zoning change. There has also been no suggestion that the owner of these vacant lots has interest in pursuing a 100% affordable project. Here, the balance tips in favor of retaining the R7A zoning that the Fort Greene community fought for in 2007. I'd like to thank the community for presenting so many different uh, points of view on how we came to this particular place. I want to thank all of the advocates for advocating for prevailing wage to make sure that we have work sites that have uh, jobs where people can be proud of and a, and a wage that they can actually live and raise a family with benefits in New York City. I want to thank Crystal Hudson on my team. Uh, she has done a phenomenal job throughout the negotiation process. And I want to thank um, all of the colleagues that have worked with me, but most importantly, I wanna thank Hanson Place Seventh-day Adventist Church and all of their members. They have done extraordinary work in our community from the food pantry to the education of our youth and so many other integral programs that have helped to make the Fort Greene community the place that it is today. So I wanna thank everyone here uh, for making this possible and I'm now going to turn it back to Chair Moya. Thank you, uh, Councilwoman, and just wanted to congratulate you again on, on uh, the wonderful work on this project. And I want to say that it was probably one of the best hearings I uh, was uh, able to chair uh, in my short time here. Uh, the wonderful congregation uh, really made that uh, a very special uh, hearing. The 35th uh, District always keeps it interesting. <laughs> we'll have plenty more good hearings for you. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so we will be voting to approve with modifications uh, both of the block uh, 675 applications, LUs uh, 89 through 91, and 92 through 94 uh, in Speaker Johnson's district in Manhattan. Uh, these applications uh, for zoning map changes, text amendments, and special permits will facilitate the transfer uh, of floor area from uh, Hudson River Park as permitted by state law to upend development sites. The state and city own the underlying park property and the Hudson River Park Trust leases the property from each entity and operates 
the park. In 2016, to facilitate the continued repair, rehabilitation, maintenance, and development of the Hudson River Park, the special Hudson River Park District was established. Uh, the provisions of the special district permit the transfer of unused development rights from the park in exchange for financial contributions dedicated to the improvement of the park. The applicant applications before us today would establish a new granting site and new receiving sites in the special Hudson River Park District, uh, permit a wider range of uses and higher density on the two development sites, require permanently affordable housing, and support certain identified improvements and the maintenance of the Hudson River Park within Manhattan Community uh, District 4. Uh, we will be modifying the special permit plans for Site A, the development at 106 West 29th Street, to reduce the tower height of the building to less than 600 feet. We will be modifying both the app applications for uh, 601 West 29th Street and 606 West 30th Street to ensure that the sp specified park improvements are properly funded and the additional financial contributions totaling uh, $4 million will facilitate the completion of a stretch of the park between 32nd and 34th Street. Last, we will be modifying the restrictive declarations associated with each site to ensure that open space mitigation funds contributed by the developers are applied by the Parks Department to Chelsea Park, and that if uh, child care impacts are found at the time of development, uh, ACS consider whether it is feasible to distribute child care vouchers to qualifying residents of the development for use at daycare facilities in the community district. Speaker Johnson could not be here today, uh, but I want to congratulate him on this important project, uh, which will benefit the Hudson River Park and all its users, and uh, will now read his statement into the record. Today we will be voting on two land use applications that I've been working on for years, even before I was sworn in as a council member when I was chair of Community Board 4. It presented a lot of challenges and involved a wide range of diverse stakeholders. But the proposals have the potential to produce substantial affordable housing, create more open green space, and help us achieve many long sought goals for our community. I'm extremely proud to say that after a long, rigorous process involving much negotiations, detailed and thoughtful input from the community and my colleagues in government, the projects on Block 675 Le Lazarian at 606 West 30th Street and Douglas, Glug, Douglaston Development at 601 West 29th Street are all, are all around win for the people of my district and the city. While both projects have and will contain some of the nicest affordable housing units in the country, a main impetus of this project is to help complete Hudson River Park, putting needed capital money between the areas from 29th to 34th Street. With the additional investment, approximately 10% more will be coming to the park. Uh, we've seen an unprecedented level of support for Hudson River Park from both the state, city, and the private development community in the last two years. In addition, the Douglaston development will provide uh, 12,500 square feet of lot area to allow the construction of a new permanent FDNY EMS facility to be the new home of the EMS station number seven, which is currently on West 23rd Street. EMS station number seven, which provides vital emergency services, will better will be better equipped to serve the west side of Manhattan as a result of this development. Both projects will also create approximately 310 units of desperately needed permanent affordable housing on the west side. Through this process, we will be able to achieve an equitable distribution of affordable units throughout both buildings, exceeding the 65% distribution minimum. Both the market rate and affordable units will, be, uh, will provide the same Fixtures and finishes and discounts will be offered to fee-based amenities to families and individuals who live in the affordable units. Furthermore, to maintain the character of the surrounding neighborhood, Douglaston Development has redesigned its tower and decreased its maximum height to less than 600 feet. Lazarian has maximized its development to include an out parcel that otherwise would have been sandwiched between two towers. There are many partners involved in this effort, and I want to thank Deputy Mayor Glenn City Planning Chair Lago, my fellow local elected officials, and the Hudson River Park Trust President Madeline Wills, and the persistent advocacy of the Friends of the Hudson River Park. Uh, I want to also thank Community Board 7, Bert Lazarian, uh, and uh, CB4 members Lee Compton, Betty 
McIntosh, J.D. Nolan, and Joe Ratusia. Finally, I want to acknowledge uh, Steve Charno, uh, Steve Levin from the Douglaston Development, and Kevin Lazarian for their spirit of collaboration to make sure we deliver to the public the best possible project. And thank you for your support, Speaker Johnson. Um, we will now be voting to approve the two revocable consent applications for the sidewalk cafes that will be uh, that we held hearings on this morning. And I now call for a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the local council members to approve LUs 107, 110, 111, 112, 113, and 114 uh, to approve with the modifications I have described for LUs 89 through 91 and 92 through 94, and LUs 108 and 109. Uh, council, uh, please call the roll. Constantinides. Vote aye on all. Moya. Aye on all. Lansman. Aye. Levin. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. And Rivera. Aye. The land use items are approved by a vote of six in the affirmative, zero negative, and no abstentions, and recommended for approval to the full land use committee. Thank you. I would like. I would now like to thank the. Uh, I would now like to thank uh, members of the public, my colleagues, uh, the council and land use staff for all the great work that they've been doing, and for everyone who's attending the hearing. And let me turn it over <laughs> once again to the great councilwoman from Brooklyn, uh, Councilwoman Cumber. Thank you, and I just want to thank Raju Men and Brian Paul for all their incredible work um, on this particular project. They really stayed with us and got through a very <laughs> challenging time. And I also want to thank uh, Pastor Penn um, of Hanson Place Seventh-day Adventist Church, who has done a no-man's job of leading his church uh, throughout this entire project. So just want to thank everyone for being here and for all of their support. Thank you, colleagues. And now I turn it back to Chair Moya. Thank you, and just one quick correction. It was uh, Jeff Levine, not Steve Levin. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna leave the roll open for uh, 10 more minutes. Thank you. <laughs>